Psychologists find that stereotype threat, a popular explanation for sex differences in math achievement, may be wrong. Why are there more men than women in the top tiers of mathematics achievement and in math-related disciplines? This is a question that almost everybody finds of great interest, and one that has been hotly debated because of the prestige associated with math-intense jobs. The heat debate was sparked by comments on this topic by the previous president of Harvard University, Professor Lawrence Summers, in 2005, and the incredible discussion his comments evoked in the media. This debate remains just as heated today, and much of the debate is driven by emotion rather than by science. But without proper scientific explanations of the gender gap, the arguments can never be resolved. One of the most popular scientific explanations of the gap is stereotype threat. The idea is that women have a poor self-image of their math performance because of a predominant stereotype that women are not as good in mathematics as men. The claim is that it is women's belief in this stereotype that makes them underachieve and that eliminating the stereotype can eliminate the gap. This explanation of the sex gap in math performance was first proposed and tested in a now seminal paper by Spencer Steele and Quinn in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology in 1999. But this explanation sounds almost too good to be true. If it is indeed the case that women and girls underachieve merely because of beliefs and opinions rather than because of actual ability and interests, solutions should be straightforward and simple, just get rid of the stereotype. It's exactly this idea that has been used in policy decisions in the United States and elsewhere. Stoot from the University of Leeds and David Geary from the University of Missouri asked if the evidence for the stereotype threat explanation is as compelling as many social psychologists and science writers continue to claim. They reviewed all replication attempts of the aforementioned seminal study by Spencer and colleagues. They found that many of the studies claiming to strengthen the stereotype threat explanation suffer from methodological flaws, such as not including a control group, that is, Many of the studies did not include male participants, completely ignoring the fact that men might also suffer from the experimental manipulations applied to the female participants in those studies. To their surprise, they found that only few studies used an experimental design that could have replicated the effect in the first place. And of the ones that did, just over half of them found such an effect. Still, around half of those studies used improperly applied statistical adjustments. Of the studies that did not have major methodological concerns, only one in three replicated the stereotype threat effect on women's math performance. Stute and Geary conclude that the strength of the evidence for stereotype threat as a cause of the sex differences in mathematics performance is weak and does not support the current level of enthusiasm found in academic circles or the general media, much less its use in policy decisions. Stute and Geary discuss the detrimental effect this may have on developing interventions that aim to improve women's and girls' actual math abilities. For example, politicians, 
and educational institutions might not be willing to invest more in the development and application of more effective and expensive interventions if they believe that reducing stereotype threat is all that is needed to reduce the gender gap.